Okay, kids, this is our last lesson on how to crush our fears. I hope you've enjoyed all of these lessons. Meow. One of the big differences between a game like Candy Crush and a game that tells a story like Mario series is that Mario a beginning has a beginning, middle, and end. Games like that tell a story. And like all stories, there is a final battle, a chance to win it all. It may take a few tries, or dozens of tries, or even hundreds of tries, but there is a way to defeat the big bad enemy in the end and win the game with a victory. Candy Crush doesn't end that way. As a matter of fact, puzzle games like Candy Crush never end. They present you with one puzzle after another, puzzles that get more and more challenging as they go. Every player starts off eager and excited as they blaze through the first few levels. But when the puzzles get harder, people drop out. Candy Crush doesn't end with the final puzzle. It ends when the player is bored or frustrated or stuck. They stop playing, they forget about the last frustrating level, and they eventually delete the game. Candy Crush is a lot more like life than Mario. There are no happy endings and there are victories, but each victory comes with a new beginning. Like Candy Crush, the challenges of life get harder and harder. At age three, your biggest challenge was sorting shapes and learning to use the potty. In elementary school, it's math and spelling and making good friends. Middle school will get harder, so will high school and college. And then there's adulthood, where life gets really challenging. There will be easy victories for sure, but there will be hard ones as well. Some challenges will test your faith or resolve and your courage. There will be closed doors and other obstacles meant to guide us through on the right path. But there are other challenges God wants us to face so we can grow as people of faith. When those challenges arise, we need to give our fears to God and trust Him to give us victory. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. First John 4, 18a. Hi kids and welcome to our Wednesday night lesson. Um, as always, let's start off with singing Trust in the Lord. Here we go. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. I hope you yelled at the TV. All right, tonight our lesson is about crushing our fear, and we're going to learn about a teenage boy who crushed his fear and showed everybody that if you trust in God, you don't need to have fear. So we're going to be learning about David and Goliath, and I'm sure that you've heard this lesson before, but I want you to put it in perspective of how old David was and how God can help you crush your fear. So while teenagers face tough decisions today, they have to do their schoolwork, they have to decide whether or not they're going to go along with their friends, which may not be making the best decision. This was a teenager that had a rather unusual circumstance. Um, David was face to face with a giant soldier who wanted to kill him. And the giant had sent an entire army to kill Israel. And the army of Israel was in hiding. They were so afraid of this giant. But David found the courage to face him, and God gave this brave young man a remarkable victory. So I want you to open your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 17, and we're going to start reading at verse 32, and we're going to read through 51a. And you're going to see some pictures pop up of my journaling Bible. And I thought it was just fitting because April 14th is when I am actually filming this instead of April 15th. And that is the reading for April 14th. Tell me that's not a God thing. So I hope you have it pulled up in your Bible. It's 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 32 through 51a. Here we go. Don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. I'll go fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul said. There is no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy. And he's been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal the lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, 
I'll catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and to bears, and I'll do this to this pagan Philistine too. For he has defiled the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. Saul finally consented. All right, go ahead, he said, and may the Lord be with you. Then Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped the sword over it, and took a step or two to see what it was like, for he had never worn such things before. I can't go in these, he protested to Saul. I'm not used to them. So David took them off again. He picked up five smooth stones from the stream and put them in his shepherd's bag. Then, armed only with his shepherd's staff and a sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. Goliath walked out toward David with his shield bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt at his ruddy-faced boy. I am a dog, he roared at David, that you come at me with a stick? And he cursed David by the names of his gods. Come over here and I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals, Goliath yelled. David replied to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head, and then I'll give it Give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and the wild animals. Woo. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with a sword and a spear. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give you to us. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him. Reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone, he hurled it at his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in, and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. King Saul and the men of Israel were terrified of Goliath, rightly so. Um, the Bible speaks that he was um, probably around nine feet tall. Um, that's a big guy. <laughs> no doubt that they had seen him in battle, taking down one man after another man, and this giant sword and shield that he had, no man dared to face him one-on-one, -on -one, fearing that they would simply get crushed. I'm sure David was nervous when he saw the giant. I would be. But when he heard Goliath mock the Lord, he had to step up. David knew that God would not stand for this giant mocking him. And God gave David the courage to face Goliath. And he gave David an incredible victory. David shows us that we can claim victory when we trust in the Lord. It's just like our song, Trust in the Lord. Hey, worked out perfect. David wasn't scared of Goliath, even though he was a big, huge giant. He said, uh-uh, I'm not scared of you. Despite his ups and downs, David was known as a man after God's own heart. And he wrote countless worship songs dedicated to God. And those are written down in the book of Psalms. It's not easy to keep our eyes on God, especially living in a time like we do. David shows us that God is always faithful to those who remember him. God knows we'll have many challenges, just like the one we're in now, and we'll face giants. They may not look like Goliath, but they're giants for sure. I wanna encourage you as we close to pray with me and let's pray about the giants that we're facing. Because right now, 
the whole world is facing a giant in this virus. So let's pray for that and let's pray that we keep our eyes on God. Bow with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your son, Jesus. And Lord, we just pray that you'll help us keep our eyes focused on you during this pandemic and that we will not worry and not fear because our eyes are on you, Lord. Just like David, we pray that we can be children of God with your heart in ours. Lord, we love you, and it's in your name that we pray. Amen. See you next week. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. First John 4, 18a. Lollipop, lollipop, lolly, 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 lollipop. Ba-dum, bum, bum, bum. Tonight for our Candy Crush series, we're going to actually crush some candy. And so I found this cool thing where we can make crystal rock suckers or lollipops. And you actually get to crush the candy. So I have here a baking dish that's sort of deep so that the candy does fly everywhere when I crush it. And I have a neat tenderizer here. Um, so this is another thing that you'll need to do with your parents present. And I'm going to start crushing this and then um, I'll come back in another video and tell you how to do all of this. I'll come back later. This is actually really fun crushing our fears like this. Oops, I'm Our Bible buddy reading for tonight is Luke 15, verses 3 through 10. You can see here our Bible buddy is being accompanied by our cat, Tiger, who has decided to cover up the Bible verses with his paws. I picked this one because Jesus is giving a parable about sheep and David was a shepherd. So I'll go ahead and read this while you can look at Tiger and our Bible buddy and my drawing. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has 100 sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who do not repent. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Does she not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. There you go. Thank you, Tiger. Oh, he's sassy. Okay, you can see here um, making the geodes that we're making with the candy after we've crushed it. I uh, wadded up some parchment paper, non-stick, and made circles out of it um, because usually rock formations that you find are in circle patterns. And um, then I took the um, smashed up candy and I put inside the parchment paper. Um, I made this design out of green and um, blue. And then I have blue left that I'm going to put in the middle of this green one. You are then going to heat your oven along with the parent to 275 degrees and you're going to let these cook for about five minutes and then when you bring them out, hopefully you have the package of treat sticks from last week. You can tell I'm filming this all at the same time and uh, then you stick them in there really quick and it makes a geode um, lollipop for you. 
So I hope these work. I'm getting ready to stick them in the oven now. So here we go. All right, I just pulled them out of the oven and I'm gonna take my treat stick and I'm gonna kind of just stick it in there. And it looks like this one's not completely connected. So we'll take a treat stick and kind of do some magic here. Mix it together. Uh-oh. There we go. <laughs> and we'll just stick this treat stick in this one. All right, so I'm gonna let these dry and uh, we'll pull them out of the parchment when they're done. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. First John 418 a these geodes are really funny looking and I'm not sure they look like geodes, but they kind of look like little earths, which can remind us to pray for everyone around the world right now as we're going through this virus, but I'm sure they are yummy. You guys will have to send me pictures of yours because I'm sure yours turned out a lot better than mine. Playing the role of Goliath is Tiger. Playing the role of David is the Bible Betty. Here we go. Oh, look how big Goliath is compared to the Bible. But, but, oh no, that's that's not how the story goes, Tiger. It, it's not. You you went off script here. <coughs> Now that you've learned how to crush your fear, I hope you'll come back next week and learn how to be a prayer warrior. Meow!